this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a SmackDown comparison between two flagship Android phones. We have the Sony Xperia Z here, and we have the HTC One. Both of these have large Full HD displays, run Android, have slightly customized user interfaces, and have quad-core CPUs. So how do you choose? We're going to look at them now and find out. So here it is, the tale of two big smartphones right here, both running Android Jelly Bean 4.1.2. Not quite the latest version of Jelly Bean, but we're not going to complain too much about that. On the HTC, we have HTC Sense 5, and on Sony, we have their nameless UI, which really doesn't change vanilla Android all that much. Then again, neither does Sense 5.0. It really is a very light touch on Android, so like both of those. 4.7 inch 1080p display on the HTC One, a 5 inch 1080p display on the Xperia. As you can see, the HTC has a brighter screen. Sony uses their Bravia 2 engine, and you know, if you look at the phone by itself and you haven't seen the HTC One, uh oh, just by saying that you know it's coming, right? Well, it looks great by itself, but then you see it next to the HTC One, and the brightness and the increased contrast really are noticeable. And the other thing is the viewing angles. Now, it's a little hard to show you on screen because we get reflections and things going on, but viewing angles stay very good on the HTC. Yeah, kind of painted on look from the side if you see it in person, uh, which the camera really can capture so well. And the problem with the Xperia is the notorious color shift that they suffer more quickly, more easily, and it just kind of disappears. And again, it's a little hard to see on camera the difference as much, but Really, it's there. The Xperia, the blacks don't look as black. Now, the Bravia engine does something to optimize photos and video. So when you're looking at the home screen right here, it's really not doing too much. But when you're playing a video, suddenly blacks can get blacker on this. It's interesting. And if you're looking at photos, the contrast does increase. So it's a variable experience with the Sony, which is part of the reason I think that overall it gives a nice pleasing appearance when you're actually using the phone because photos and videos do look nice, but still, Viewing angles, contrast, brightness, HTC One is the winner there. The Sony does have a larger display, but it doesn't have front capacitive buttons, so as you can see, that part of the display is always taken up by this navigation here. Well, not always, always, because if you're in gallery, if you're watching movies, if you're viewing photos, if you're playing games, those are hidden and you tap on the screen to bring back your on-screen control. So when it really, really counts, when you're looking at photos and videos and playing games, you, you aren't losing that real estate there, but I know some people are really bugged by the on-screen buttons. Uh, this may be the way of the future, though. Google really wants folks to just go to the on-screen way. They've been trying to push them. So far, it hasn't happened. But the HTC, here's the interesting thing. They, they maintain their capacitive buttons right here. We have our home button, we have our back button, and we have the HTC logo in the middle, which does nothing but sit there and look, well, pretty, I'm sure HTC folks think. But there's no third menu button, which is kind of weird. So every once in a while when you're in an, in an application that actually doesn't have its own menu system built in, more modern Android updated apps that actually have a little tappy thing on the top or something like that to get to preferences or whatever, you will have a little bar down here just to give you that little on-screen menu control. So you can occasionally lose some screen real estate. But all in all, the difference between 4.7 and 5 inches, it's not a hugely significant difference. It's not like looking at the Galaxy Note 2 with the 5.5 inch display and saying, well, gee, there, there's a difference. In terms of looks, these are both very good looking phones. These are flagships for their respective manufacturers. This is going to be a little bit subjective. It's going to depend on what you prefer. For the HTC One, it's available in your choice of Silver with white accents are black, and it's a black metal. Aluminum, unibody construction, some injection molded plastic in here to fill around where the antennas have to run it and so on. Uh, certainly rigid, very sturdy, it's metal. Uh, so far we haven't had it scratch. It, it doesn't pick up fingerprints. Will it eventually scratch? We'll find out. And I haven't been particularly careful with this in the 10 days that we've had it though and it's been fine. So, you know, it's metal. It's pretty sturdy stuff. The Xperia, on the other hand, goes with the all black glass look. Now it's a very attractive looking phone. It's a very angular looking phone. Straight sides here, it's a little bit thinner, 0.31 inches versus 0.36 inches for the HTC. The HTC curves, so thicker in the middle, thinner on the sides. If you put them edge to edge, you won't see the difference so much. It's the overall thickness. And on the back, we have shatter-resistant glass, Sony says. Uh, personally, me, I'm a little terrified of glass phones. I wasn't too thrilled with the all-glass iPhone, the Nexus 4, you know. It's, it's glass everywhere. It's a little bit delicate. It's very pretty looking, though, and does show fingerprints, particularly we have the black model here. It's available in black, white, or purple. They all actually look pretty cool. Uh, but 
yeah, it gets dirty. It doesn't always look so nice. But you know what the neat thing is about this? The interesting thing is, is, is water resistant. Up to one meter submersion in water, supposedly. You can wash this in the sink if you want to. You just have to make sure to close all the little rubber doors everywhere that cover your ports. So, well, at least it's easy to clean up, isn't it? And for those of you who work outdoors and you need a more water-resistant phone, that could be a very attractive feature on this. Speaking of all those rubber doors, well, they're a little bit fiddly for those of us who really don't tend to play in water a whole lot with our phones, but we have to point out that you've got your micro SD card slot cover, your micro USB cover. Every port on here is covered except for this little dock station, which is interesting that that one's not covered, but I guess that's okay. So if you hate fiddly rubber doors, well, they're going to be here. But the good part is, makes it water resistant. HTC, on the other hand, well, there's not many ports to look at, but you have your micro USB here, you have a headphone jack up here, and that's about it. Both of these have batteries that are sealed inside, but one nice thing about the Sony is it actually has a micro SD card slot, so you can expand storage with the HDC no-go. You can get it in a 32 gig or a 64 gig because, well, the storage is still inside, so they give you a little bit more storage, but you can't expand it anyway. The Sony has 16 gigs of storage, but you have that micro SD card slot, so there's a lot of versatility there. That's definitely a point in its favor. In terms of horsepower and internals, what we've got inside here, both of these run Qualcomm Snapdragon quad-core CPUs. The difference is the Sony uses the S4 Crate CPU, the S4 Pro that is, that we've seen on a couple of phones now that is a 1.5 gigahertz quad core CPU and the HTC One uses the, uses the even newer Snapdragon 600 quad core CPU clocked at 1.7 gigahertz. The HTC has the shall we say forward looking CPU right here with Adreno 320 graphics on board. It's the same thing you're going to see pretty much in the Samsung Galaxy S4 here in the United States. A couple of other up and coming phones like the LG Optimus G Pro will have that CPU as well. So a faster performer, but take that with a grain of salt. Both of these are very fast phones. Most of us normals out there who use our phone for just about everything, including 3D gaming, is you're going to be hard-pressed to really feel the difference because they're both extremely fast. But still, in terms of raw performance and benchmark numbers, what you can see right here, we have Quadrant up and running. HTC One scored 12,741 on Quadrant. The Sony Xperia Z has a 7916 score. For Antutu, 24,589 for the HTC One versus 20,403 for the Xperia Z. For the GL Benchmark 2.7 Egypt HD 2.5 test, 37 frames per second off screen and 33 on screen for the HTC One, the Xperia Z manage 32 frames on and off screen. So actually, not too far apart between the two right there. Sun Spider 1155 on the HEC1 and 1306 on the Xperia Z. Those are close enough that I'm not going to say there's really a significant winner there either. So both fast phones, but yes, the HTC is faster. Both of these have two gigs of DDR2 RAM inside, so they got so they both have the same amount of RAM inside, good for multitasking. That's plenty for today's modern top phones. Now for those of you in the US, uh, except for those of you who buy unlocked phones at full retail prices, likely the Xperia Z isn't figuring too strongly into your buying strategy right now. There's a rumor that it might come out on T-Mobile, but that's about it so far. Sony is well represented in Europe and really not so well in the United States. So Sony Xperia Z is available from online importers. Sony may sell it direct, but they don't say that they're going to have a US LTE version. So that means HSPA plus 4G is as fast as you can go on the Sony. Now, for those of you who are overseas, you do get LTE there, so that's a wash. These are these are both pretty equivalent. But for those of us in the US, you get a LTE on the HTC One. You did not get it with the Xperia Z. In, in terms of carrier availability, maybe T-Mobile with the Sony. Just rumor. We don't know that for sure. The HTC One will be available on AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile. And there's an unlocked version that HTC sells direct. In terms of the dialing experience, it's fairly similar here. You get your last known call up here if, if one is available. And you can go through your favorites, your contacts, so that kind of thing up top. Obviously, the white theme treatment from the Sony, a black theme treatment from the HTC. To me, it doesn't matter which color it is. Both of these, by the way, are very viewable outdoors. So, regardless of which color it is, you're going to be able to see it outdoors, which is cool. 
call quality on the Xperia Z is better. In all of our tests, and we have made a whole lot of calls in different environments, always really nice, loud, sharp, and clear for incoming and outgoing voice. The, it's an excellent voice phone. The HTC is a good voice phone, but so far it hasn't been ex excellent for us. Incoming and outgoing audio can sound a little bit digitized. I always feel like this. HTC tries a little too hard with their noise reduction. They have a microphone on the back, they have a microphone on the side, and they use those to try to do some active noise canceling, and sometimes it results in some digitized voice. When it comes to Bluetooth calling, we know that the HTC One and One X had some quirks when they first came out with Bluetooth calling, where voice was absolutely atrocious. That's not a problem for the HTC One. However, Bluetooth is quieter and less clear, I would say, than on the Sony, but it's still it's very usable. It's not a hideous problem or a bug or something like that, but overall for voice calls I would pick up the Xperia Z before the HTC One in terms of call quality. And to be clear, we're using the GSM AT&T model of the HTC One here and we're also using the Xperia Z on AT&T. In terms of software customization, both of these phones do a fairly nice job of letting Android itself shine through here. You can see the icon palettes HTC likes to do the up and down thing. Everybody else goes with the default Google of going sideways. It's no big deal. It doesn't really matter. It's just a little confusing when you're used to one or the other and you first switch. You can see we get a transparent background effect here where HTC goes with the icons on the black background. This might be pretty. I think black background is actually a little bit easier to see in terms of not obscuring your icons. Preloaded software. Now this is going to depend on which carrier version that you get here for the HTC One or even the Xperia Z overseas where carriers may customize stuff. But in each case, they both have the full suite of Google applications. They both have an Office viewer. It doesn't edit Office documents. The Sony is loaded with a whole lot of Sony applications because you know they have a lot of services. They have a music streaming service. They have a video service where you can buy movies. So all that stuff's loaded on here, as is PlayStation Mobile for gaming. So you get a little selection of customized games there. But still, in either case, you're going to have a nice selection of games now on Google Play Store. And both of these are fast enough, robust enough to play games well. With the home screen on the Sony, it's pretty much your normal Android stuff here. A couple of custom widgets, photo viewer, music playback control, weather widget. That's about it. And you've got a strip of quick launch icons here. HTC likewise has a strip of quick launch icons, but they're a little special thing here is Blinkfeed, and Blinkfeed is really cool. This is your all-in-one visual news reader plus social networking plus upcoming TV stuff plus your appointments all-in-one. I actually really like this a lot. And this becomes your left home screen on the HTC One, which is the default, though you can change this. When you hit the home button, it's actually going to take you to Blinkfeed first. Oh, and you also get the time and you get the weather. Now this has TV listings on it because, well, it has a consumer IR remote up top. That black power button doubles as the IR window, and there's an HTC TV application. Now you can learn a whole lot more about that by watching our video review to see all the features of the HTC. But that's a pretty neat feature. It controls your home AV gear and gives you a very good TV listing application, complete with a grid. Something that the Sony doesn't have. Sony has done that with their Xperia tablets, but they haven't done it with the phone. As I mentioned, both of these have batteries that are sealed inside the unit. Neither of these is particularly easy to open up if you're the adventurous type. Uh, it's just about impossible to take the HEC1 apart. It's going to involve a hair dryer and patience to take your Xperia apart. But at any rate, similar battery capacity, 2300 milliamps on the HTC One and 2330 on the Xperia Z. You would think you'd get similar battery life, but no, the HTC actually lasts a lot longer when it comes to use with the screen actually being on. That means, well, browsing the web, reading your email, watching videos, anything where you're actually looking at it as opposed to calls. When it comes to calling time, the Xperia Z is actually a little bit longer, but in all other uses, it's significantly shorter. And even more interesting is we've had LTE turned on, of course, on our HTC One, and I've disabled LTE on the Xperia Z because we don't have the proper LTE bands for this. So LTE is often a big power consumer. It didn't help it any. So by about two hours longer actual use time on a charge advantage for the HTC One. Now here's a real interesting one. Cameras. Both of these really, well, they try to appeal to camera buffs. 13 megapixel main rear camera on the Sony Xperia Z using their new Exmor RS sensor. HDR for photos and video. Really, it's an excellent camera. I know that reviews have been all over the place on the camera quality, but I have to say that it's quite good. Colors have been nice and lively. Not quite as zingy as the HTC One, but still uh, realistic. I know everybody likes hyper-saturated, exaggerated colors, but it's been quite good. The HDR mode is uh, needs a little tweaking there, Sony. 
if you turn it on, honestly, it really doesn't do all that much, a little bit. Whereas on HTC, boy, it, it almost does too much, to be honest, sometimes. It really brings out the dark areas to a point that's spooky looking, slightly. But I suppose more detail is better than no detail. Anyway, fast camera here. You can shoot photos, you can shoot video on screen, all sorts of advanced options for you camera folks who want to tinker. You can see right here on the overlay. Focusing speeds have been fine for us. Uh, this has image stabilization that's digital. It's not optical. The HTC One has optical image stabilization. I find that's much more effective, particularly when shooting video. Now we're looking through the HTC One's viewfinder here, and you can see icons for photo, for video. Once again, this is for various effects. Quick access to the gallery and for our settings right here. Lots of settings as well, just presented in a linear mode rather than the grid mode. So both of these have lots of settings to keep folks happy. Now, 4 megapixels here, 13 megapixels on the Sony back there that we see in the viewfinder. If you're taking photos outdoor in good lighting, you're going to say, wow, the Sony takes better pictures. I'm sorry, ultra pixels on the HTC One are a great idea. They do let more light in. You do get really colorful photos. Really very good for night photography, and it beats the Sony there. But if you're shooting in good light, either indoors in good fluorescent lighting, say in an office space, or outdoors in good sunlight, there's just more da data in the images on the Sony. If you take your picture on your computer and you zoom in and you crop a spot, you'll be able to read road signs, see blades of grass better. So uh, there's still a place for more megapixels. So which camera is better? Honest to God, it's not an easy choice. It really depends on where you're shooting. If you're shooting a lot indoors and at night, I think that HTC would be the winner because it does phenomenal things in, God, near darkness. But if you're shooting often in good lighting, I would take the more megapixels and the finer detail in the Sony. And if you want zingier colors, you can always post-process it and jack up the colors a bit. Now, HTC has a little neat thing called HTC Zoe. If you've watched our video review, you, you know about that. If you haven't, well, go ahead and watch it. But anyway, you tap right here, and Zoe takes a series of photos and a three-second video and makes kind of a montage. So you can pick the best shot or just have like sort of like a, a Vine experience with just a little snapshot of life. They also enhance the gallery in a kind of cool way. And we'll get back to our main view of the gallery. And the first thing you'll notice is our gallery actually animates. Little things like our little cat is moving around in here, and it just... Anything that has a video, oops, somebody just walked through a room there, will start moving. And then you get event views where it actually will start doing presentations of any photos that were taken together in a group, which is kind of neat, too. So there's, a, there's some fun little tweaks going on here. As to how long this stays entertaining, well, it's a fr up for you to decide, but it's certainly entertaining for, for at least the first week you own the phone. Both of these phones have dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, and we have added support for Wi-Fi AC on the HTC One. They both have Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, a GPS with GLONASS, so all even footing there. And as you might guess from the horsepower and resolution standpoint, they're both very good for gaming. They're both just great for HD video playback, full HD 1080p content on screen. And again, you can watch our video reviews of each of those to see them in action doing just those things. So I think for those of us in the U.S., probably the HTC One is going to be the winner just because you can get it with a carrier subsidy and carrier support versus the Xperia Z. Though, as I said, that could change if a carrier decides to pick up the Xperia Z. For those of you who are overseas and these are available both same price through this, perhaps even the same carriers, it's a tougher choice. And some of it's really going to be a matter of personal preference. Do you like Sony software better? Are you used to the Xperia experience, so to speak? Are you into HTC? Do you prefer the metal body versus the glass body? Granted, the screen is a little bit better on the HTC. The battery life's a little bit better on HTC. So I think it has a couple of stronger points. And lastly, something we hadn't gotten to is HTC boom sound. Right up here, big stereo speakers. Really nice sound. For a phone, this sounds more like a tablet. Whereas with the Xperia, we have just one speaker on the side right there. Which isn't too bad sounding, but it's not a great sounding speaker. And if you tend to hold the phone by its edges in landscape mode, you can easily cover that speaker up. So that's the Sony Xperia Z versus the HTC One. And you know they're both actually very nice phones, as you've discovered. But I have to give the, the edge to the HTC One all around for features. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of both of these phones. Watch our video reviews of each of these phones. And don't forget to hit that like button.